Well, welcome to Perspectives from WFSU Public Media. I'm Tom Flanagan, and this program, using the Zoom platform, which we all have come to know and love in such great abundance, was pre-recorded on Tuesday, April 20th for playback on Thursday, April 22nd. The show to be aired on WFSU-FM, also to be archived on WFSU.org, which has an entire backlog of material that you may go and peruse at your leisure if you miss any of these programs or only catch a portion of it. We keep it there for you so you can go back and uh, check it out anytime that you want. Well, almost a quarter of a century ago, a new organization burst forth on the Tallahassee scene, and that year was 2007. And since then, the Knight Creative Communities Institute, more commonly known as KCCI, has been making positive change in the Tallahassee community, KCCI, bringing together a diverse group of community catalysts who implement sense of place projects that help retain, attract, and harness talent, increase entrepreneurship, and enhance Tallahassee's economic mobility. I did not craft those words. They came directly from the boilerplate on the uh, KCCI homepage. So on today's Perspectives, we're going to get an update on what the organization has been up to, even in the midst of the pandemic. We'll get some historical background. We'll also talk about what lies ahead for KCCI and the community it seeks to enhance. And uh, we've just been joined by Ryan. Ryan, we'll get to you in just a sec, man. Uh, let's first meet KCCI Executive Director Betsy Couch in uh, full Disclosure, you and I used to work together way back in the day. Betsy, it is good to see you. How you been? Good to see you, Tom. I've been great. I mean, I have the best job in the world that I get to work with so many incredible Tallahassee residents that are our community catalysts every year. So thanks for having us on the show today. Well, thank you, Betsy. We, uh, we have a selection of catalysts from uh, three different classes, and they were involved in various projects, and we're going to get into those as we go forward. Let's um, get with the most recent class. This is the class of 2021, the Community Catalysts, who are in the Access uh, Art uh, Tallahassee category. Shannon Colavecchio joins us there, and uh, you have a couple buddies here we can talk about, Shannon. So uh, uh, welcome aboard, and let's talk a little bit about the Access Art project that you guys have been doing here for the past uh, several weeks, and we can already see the fruits of your labors out there on various intersections, can't we? Yes, those are, we have, we're up to 10 boxes. And so I'm also joined today by Dan uh, Taylor, who's a local artist who is also on the 2021 Catalyst team. And he has art that has actually already been put on a box downtown. So he is uh, living and doing the dream that we have. So our focus is, is to expand Art of the Box throughout the community. And we're doing that on a number of fronts. So last week, we actually just uh, unveiled our first box that is two things. It's privately sponsored. So it's near the corner of uh, where the McClay School lives off of Meridian Road. And it also features artwork from a local student. So we love showcasing artists of all ages. And so that was our 10th box. We also have boxes that are downtown that started uh, before the Catalyst team even started meeting as part of that pilot project. And we, on two different fronts, are working to expand throughout the county and throughout the city. So we have an agreement with the county. Um, they have generously set aside $20,000 for us to wrap large utility boxes in five different locations throughout the county. So we have put out a call to artists to uh, you know, commission the art for that, and then we'll select those pieces and then wrap those. Separately, we are also working to expand to the smaller traffic control boxes that are throughout the city. And we have a corridor that we have identified and will actually be uh, going before the city commission tomorrow uh, on Wednesday, April 21st to um, hear their proposal for implementing this as a city sort of infrastructure art program in which this would become um, an established program within the city. So I'll pause there. All of that is super exciting. Um, and we are clearly on a, a mission here to get these boxes wrapped everywhere, uh, not only for graffiti abatement, but to promote the idea of art in unexpected places, right? And really showcasing the beauty of the city. Very and good. Also, 
I was okay. going to say also showcasing the local talent. Um, you know, I think that's what's so incredible that we get to see with our catalyst classes is you bring such a diverse group together and just the talent and experience that every year on these community catalyst classes that we get to see. And then the way that that ties in with art, like this year's team very specifically is focused on getting more showcasing the local artist talent that's here and then getting more art out in public spaces. But if you look back at, you know, almost since 2007, so many of KCCI's projects kind of tie in with those artistic elements. And I think it's a natural connection because it goes back to placemaking and always our projects, we try to create spaces and places that appeal to a broad range of people. You know, whether you're an eight-year-old or an 80-year-old, we want people to feel connected and welcome and whether that's creating a new park space or something like a traffic control box that they notice at their an intersection that they drive by. It's just kind of, as Shannon said, that unexpected like pop of surprise. And, and it's really broadening what we've noticed through what this year's team is doing. You're broadening access to public art. Okay, and uh, Dan Taylor, talk about your particular box that you have wrapped. Which one is that? Sure, Tom. Uh, a couple years ago, I did a, a, if you've seen my work, you know, I'm kind of an abstract artist. Um, I did a painting a couple years ago that's very bright and colorful, and it's called Springtime Tallahassee. Um, and I was inspired by, you know, uh, like uh, the recent uh, Lemoyne Chain of Parks Art Festival or the, or, the, or the Springtime Tallahassee Festival. Throngs of people abuzz under our canopy trees. And uh, so that was kind of where the painting was born um, or how it was born. And then uh, as, a, you know, as, a, as a practicing artist, I'm always looking out for calls to artists. And this really interesting one came, uh, came to me promoted by uh, Coca that was this art of the box. And it was incredibly intriguing that you could submit a a digital image of your work um, to to this to this call to artist and potentially have it wrapped on a box and mine was selected which was absolutely thrilling and my box is downtown at the college at the corner of college uh, and Monroe um, and I hope you check it out sometime <laughs> and it's um it's it's an exciting it's an exciting thing and as an artist again it's a it's thrilling to be able to see your art in public. Uh, out, out in public and it's gonna be there for years. Part of what we're doing with this project is, you know, there's some, uh, you know, graffiti abatement of course, but it's it's placemaking and it's beautification of our own, of our town. Um, and they're wrapped such that they're gonna last for many years. And with this high quality vinyl material that uh, is, if somebody does happen to come along and deface it, tag it, uh, it can be cleaned with, you know, a rag and rubbing alcohol uh, and then still continue to live on for, for years to come. So it's terribly exciting. Well, I want to circle back and talk a little bit more about uh, this year's uh, Community Catalyst uh, class with the Access Art Tallahassee Initiative. But even before that, there was some art involved in the uh, 2020 program year and the Community Catalyst class therein. Patrick O'Brien, you were part of that. And this had to do with bicycles and kids and actually a, a, a triple course at a local elementary school. Talk about your project that you were involved with there. Well, we had a tremendous group of 13 Catalysts who joined us to create a bicycle safety park at Sable Palm Elementary. It's a Title I school uh, that helps serve the 32304 zip code, which is the poorest in the state. Uh, but essentially, the, it is a streetscape mural. Uh, so it's in two parts uh, that are the painted murals. There's one underneath the pavilion. It's for, you know, kindergarten through second grade. It's a super uh, simple, just oval type uh, shaped road with a crosswalk in between, you know, it's designed for kindergartners to begin learning uh, the basics of, of bicycling. But then there's a much larger mural, uh, covers about half a football field. Um, it has a roundabout, it has a four way stop, curvatures and road, uh, just much more complicated. We also provided uh, stop signs and we created educational signage, also art that has the uh, Sable Palms mascot, a dog, teaching kids the signals for turning left, for turning right, for stopping. Uh, and so it's a bunch of different ways to incorporate art in ways that you may not expect, 
um, but can help teach kids, you know, basic road safety, and encourage kids to get out and bicycling. This has been kind of a rough year, of course, for in-person education, not just in Leon County, but elsewhere. Have you checked back at, at Sable Palm and see, are, are the kids getting use of this, Patrick, even though uh, they've kind of been half and half between virtual and in-person in the past year? Oh yeah, they, it was being used from the day it was open. We had kids out there riding their bikes. What's really cool about Leon County Schools, a lot of people don't know, is they have a rotating bicycle program um, where they have a set of about 30 bicycles that moves to different elementary schools on a monthly basis. And so when our park opened, the bicycles were at Sable Palm at the time. Uh, and so the PE teacher was very excited because it was an opportunity to get kids outside. And, you know, as we all know, we've been really thriving uh, to be outside, to get out and, you know, uh, active again. And so this was a way to get kids moving, get kids active. But yeah, from the very first day that it was open, it's been used. Well, before we even had the bikes or the decorations on the uh, traffic control boxes around town, there was a program the KCCI spearheaded to try to come up with some kind of a unified statement or visual uh, logo for the community. And uh, Brian Sheplak, that's what you guys were involved with, with your community catalyst uh, class. Talk about that and where that came from. Yeah, so the, the idea behind the sculpture was to kind of create a, a, a monument per se that, that really kind of uh, identifies, kind of, it serves as kind of an identifier sculpture for the south side of town um, and really kind of, uh, gives kind of the essence of that, that side of town. Um, the area that we had kind of uh, located the sculpture was just at the foot of the Cascades Park pedestrian bridge. And so it serves as kind of a connector between Cascades Park and then the FAMU Way connection. Um, the, the project kind of uh, evolved over time. We had originally been working with the city and the tourism department to kind of um, come up with a branding statement. And so TLH, the hashtag I Heart Tally, um, was kind of this, this uh, trending hashtag that we wanted to initiate into the project. And so what we did was we came up with, you know, TLH being the airport uh, identifying letters, we, we kind of extrapolated that in the 3D form um, and came up with this large 10 foot tall by 35 foot wide a uh, sculpture made of uh, weathering steel and cypress. And so it kind of ties back to the immediate, immediate uh, context of the buildings um, adjacent to it. I'm an architect and so I kind of get into the nit and gritty of the constructability of it and the details. We also had um, a muralist on our team, which was awesome. So we had kind of the artistic um, background and then the constructability background on my end. Um, and we also had a bunch of other just key team members that, you know, from fundraising all the way through to kind of final construction of this, the sculpture, uh, they were just key. And it was, it was an awesome experience. Even what, though, no, I'm sorry, go ahead, Betsy. I was going to say what I thought was really creative about their team too, is they use almost multiple artistic mediums. As Ryan said, you know, we had this very talented muralist Cosby Hayes on the team. So as they had designed the TLH letters and we were kind of waiting for that construction, they also looked around and said, what else can we do in town? And when they were leaving one of their meetings, they noticed that right when you go into Cleman Plaza, there was a big, you know, here is this like huge welcoming parking, parking garage and right in the core of Tallahassee. And it was pretty bland. And so they sought permission and got it approved. And they painted the hashtag I Heart Tally, very colorful mural right there on Cleman Plaza. And they were able to pull that off. I was so impressed with them within two weeks because they partnered with the city of Tallahassee to get the street closures approved and Cosby got out there and was painting day and night. Catalyst would come out and cheer him on. And, and the other thing they did is that you, I just saw it at Lemoyne Chain of Parks Art Festival this past weekend is they created about a three foot tall 
artistic rendition of hashtag I Heart Tally. And one thing our catalyst teams are always encouraged to do is to think about the long-term sustainability. So with that, they created those letters um, that I think Ryan sketched out and then um, they were able to be fabricated. And now Visit Tallahassee manages those letters and they travel around to major events. So they've been at football games, they've been at, you know, state track meets out at, you know, our, our parks. So they've been all over and that's really neat to see that kind of just how that team really kind of leveraged a lot of different mediums. And while most people know of the TLH iconic letters, you also see their works of art still throughout the community in different ways as well. Yeah, and Ryan, even a, the most cursory check of social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or any of the other platforms that are out there will show that the, uh, the I Heart Tally, it is, uh, th that has become now a regular place where people take selfies and have family portraits and everything else with the skyline of the city in the background. So it is not just a, uh, a theoretical hashtag. This is a very tangible kind of representation of the community now, which has got to give you a nice uh, warm feeling deep down yeah. inside. And, and that was the goal. I mean, it was, it was creating something that people can react to, they can post pictures of. Um, it, it kind of envelops our community and it, it really, um, it, it builds kind of this, this idea of uh, the community having a, a spot where it kind of, uh, they can focus on and uh, they can all kind of get drawn to. Um, you have that in Cascades Park um, and continuing that and, you know, pushing it down the FAMU way corridor, I think was key, especially with that being south of the railroad tracks. And so creating kind of an, an inclusion area, I think was really, really important because you have all of that dynamic activity in uh, Cascades Park, but it, it kind of gets lost as you get more south of the railroad tracks. And so kind of blurring that line was really, really important for that project. We're talking I would, about I think, folks you know, from equity. Casey. Here, excuse yeah. me just a second here. Well, a, a little quick break here, Shannon. Uh, KCCI mm -hmm. uh, representatives here from a couple of three, actually, uh, community catalyst classes and what they've been doing as far as place enhancement, which is part and parcel of uh, that organization's reason for being on this edition of Perspectives. And a reminder, if you miss all or part of the program, it is available online at wfsu.org. And we try to have the most recent program up as quickly as we can after it, uh, it actually goes on to air. Shannon, go ahead. So the, you know, the equity piece is a big focus of, I think, all of the classes. And so you hear that, you know, Ryan talking about we, it was important to that class that we were bringing people to a part of the city or maybe a, 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 a part of the Cascades Park sort of corridor that they might not normally go to, right? Sable Palm, you know, a school that, that can thrive with that additional resource of the bike park. And so as we have looked at where to put these boxes, right, especially these traffic control boxes, for example, the corridor that we have started to look at that we have brought to the city that will be talked about on um, this week at the next meeting is very mindful of wanting to not just be a midtown presence, right? We need to start on the south side of the city and then work our way through downtown, through Midtown, into Frenchtown, right? Into all those areas. Um, and, and really art can be a uniter and it can be a thing that brings people together. And our team has even started, you know, talking to Leon County Schools about what can we do to schools where students may not normally have access to art? How can we incorporate that into what they're bringing to their students in a way um, that is, you know, just dynamic and mindful and makes art exciting to these students? So the equity piece, I think, is a big part of what KCCI can bring to the community that is really important. Okay, and Betsy Couch, that's part of the transformative nature of KCCI anyway. I mean, in your mission statement, that's what you're saying, that you don't want these, um, these enhancements to be confined to more affluent areas and neighborhoods. You want this to be a community-wide kind of thing. Absolutely, and I think if you look even at the Art of the Box, the initial pilot project, the original five, we made sure were in 
all different parts of Tallahassee. So you had um, north, south, east, west, and even in downtown. And because we really wanted there to be some, some geographic diversity as well. And then of course, as it's organically growing, um, we're making sure we're very cognizant of that. And what Shannon mentioned with the corridor concept too, you know, that's something if you have imagine driving from the south side all the way, you know, through the urban core, all the way through Midtown, you know, if every traffic control box was covered with art, you know, that then becomes this identifying feature in our community. That's something that not only residents will get out and go and explore. And, and we heard that from when we did the pilot project, I had residents emailing or calling me saying, thank you for doing this. You know, one woman said, I went down to the park on the South side where she saw Perdita Ross's artwork. And she said, I never had been there. And I've lived in Tallahassee for years. So we saw people getting out to different parts of town just through that initial pilot project of Art of the Box. And I think Shannon also mentioned community engagement. Um, that's one of the beautiful things about the magic of art and even these spaces we create is you do see not only the community engagement from our diverse catalyst groups, but then you see they go out and we encourage them to pull in as many different people as possible. So, it, so by the time something gets created, it truly has been this community event. And that's one reason I think they're so popular. And, and then even on the small scale, just last week, we had AP art students come out and paint chalk art along Market Street sidewalk. And I went down there to take a picture. And just in the five minutes I was there, you saw some of the ladies coming out from their lunch spots, starting to talk to the students and say, tell me about this. You know, how did you decide to do this? You know, and then they realized they had connections and the granddaughter knew one of the students. And, and so it was just beautiful to watch that kind of community connection happening right there over chalk art. And then the other thing I think is, you know, many of the women that I observed, they walked in there like, oh, that just made my day. And we know that and research shows that, you know, art really can improve mental health. And so that's where I think, especially when we can go and get more art in Title I schools and engage the students and engage different populations that were, there's that health benefit to the community as well. So it does look aesthetically pleasing, but then there's also health benefits that are long-term and it's really exciting to see it all come together. Terrific, Patrick, go ahead. Yeah, so I was gonna say, this is a, I think a, a good opportunity to mention, right? We call ourselves catalysts um, and, and that's very purposeful, right? A catalyst is an agent that provokes um, change. And so that's the whole point on, you know, it's not, we wanna be equitable, but it's because we also want to influence and create change in our community. And I think the bike park is, is a pretty interesting example um, from my end at Sable Palm, right? If you go around that school, it has a lot of real infrastructure challenges, right? Narrow or non-existent sidewalks, uh, which is partly why we wanted to ensure that kids in that area know how to ride their bikes safely. They understand road rules um, because it is a relatively dangerous area to ride your bike. Um, but at the same time, right, it, it's creating more change. The city started looking at getting grants to improve the infrastructure in that area just after they came out to our grand opening. Um, and so that's an example of how these projects create larger change in the community um, and impact have a far more broad impact than just, you know, paint on the ground on a basketball court or, you know, uh, a vinyl wrapping of an electrical box. It has greater change. Um, and so that's the catalyst impact. Dan Taylor, you are, besides being an artist, you're also an educator. Talk about the transformative power of art, particularly when it comes to young people and the areas that they live in. Well, I'm, uh, I'm only an educator in that I, I hope, having been around so long, that I, I <laughs> edu educate, educate folks. Um, but, you know, study, research and study after study shows that uh, art has a has a major impact on lives for, you know, from the from the from the get go. Um, something I wanted to, to touch on that, that Ryan started and other folks have talked about is the, um, you know, our desire to have diversity and inclusion. And that starts with the Catalyst group. There are 13 people who are from 13 different neighborhoods and uh, from and 13 different backgrounds and um, and one of the reasons that this that this KCCI catalyst concept works so well is that uh, like our group and Patrick's group and Ryan's group you know I, I'm an an artist 
uh, we've got a you know city planner. We've got Shannon, who's a you know PR a marketing guru. We've got folks from all kind of different backgrounds that come together, and uh, we bounce ideas off of each other. And and folks know you know uh, Talithia Edwards is on our team, who's a you know Talithia, who's a force to be reckoned with, and she knows people who can help with this part of it. And uh, it's been it's been incredibly uh, rewarding so far. And this is just, just we're just getting started. And this is just April for our you know, calendar year of our Catalyst group. It's been, it's been terribly exciting and uh, really re rewarding to do. And for someone like you, Ryan Sheplak, when it comes to uh, uh, focusing an entire community on, on a concept, visual or conceptual, if you will, to try to engender greater pride of place, which, has all kinds of advantages when it comes to moving other projects forward. Was that one of the things too? I mean, you, you, you've seen for, God, it seems like centuries, the Virginia's for Lovers bumper sticker. Boy, that's a slogan that just took off and became emblematic of that particular state. Is this what you were kind, you and your classmates were looking at to having something that the community could really kind of hang its hat on and say, hey, that's, that's us and here's what it means. Absolutely. And I think, I think it's twofold. I think you have the, the direct community and you're trying to make that impact, you know, directly with, you know, students in town um, as well as the local residents. And so I think there's, there's twofold. You have that. You also have the regional aspect of it. And so you're, when you're stepping back and looking at, you know, what does Tallahassee have, have to offer um, kind of the critical elements of a community and a a place that you want to visit, you want to have, you know, local art, you want to be able to experience local art, you want to be able to experience, you know, entertainment, uh, the, the key aspects of, you know, what the, the, the city you're trying to visit. And so I think there's kind of twofold, you have the regional, then you also have the local. And so I think that was definitely very, very important. And a lot of that, um, having the tourism development committee, um, having them on board with uh, the county and visit Florida, visit Tallahassee, having all of them on board, I think was was a key component of trying to push this idea of, you know, this sculpture will be there for a very long time. And how can that sculpture attract people to not only the south side of town, um, but also Tallahassee in general. And so I think that was absolutely key. And it was a, a key focus for our entire group the entire time. And I'll say one thing I love noticing, and, and it starts with our KCCI training, but really encouraging the Catalyst to be intentional. And, um, and it, everything ends up being this incredible collaboration, but even just the intentional type of decisions that Ryan and his team made in making sure those TLH letters kind of blended with their space. How could, you know, we had some people saying, well, we want the letters to be the shiny silver, like what you see in the bean in Chicago. And they would go back and say, but, but we're not Chicago. And that's one thing I think is really special about Catalyst te teams as well is we're not trying to make Tallahassee something it's not. We are trying to take Tallahassee's assets and capitalize on those and then showcase them. And by doing that through a creative placemaking project. And every year those projects look very different based on the times. Our projects always need to be different based on what's going on. But I do, I love the TLH letters. And I know some of the team members right after they were built, they went out there on FSU and FAMU's graduation days. And there were literally lines of students waiting to get their, their picture in front of the letters. And the, at that point, the letters had only been built a couple of weeks and they were all like, yeah, we did it. You know, we've created an iconic thing that's connecting so many people. And they did that through an artistic element, which was fascinating to watch. Having another iconic location in addition to the fountain at Westcott Hall or in front of Lee Hall on the FAMU campus, which is, I mean, hey, it's, and it's only been up there for just a little bit. Betsy Couch, while we're in your neck of the woods here for the benefit of folks who maybe have not been following the origin and the progress of KCCI, nearly 25 years, I can't believe that, just a year shy of that. Talk about how the organization got started because they may know Knight, didn't that have something to do with a newspaper chain kind of sort of? How did this all get started and why did it land here in Tallahassee? 
So KCCI started in 2007 thanks to a Knight Foundation grant because at that time one of our, our the Tallahassee Democrat was owned by Knight Ritter and they looked at our community and really said okay we think Tallahassee has what it takes to be this creative class vibrant thriving community and they also have people that are interested in getting engaged and involved so KCCI started and back in 2007, there used to be three project groups a year and we were solely funded by Knight Foundation. And the goal was that you bring this diverse group of community catalysts together, you challenge them to create a placemaking project that would appeal to a wide variety of people, but that um, would you would do this within a one year time frame? So that is one reason our catalysts work on a very aggressive time frame. And I'm always so proud of them at what they get to accomplish within a year because they say, okay, for one year, we're going to roll up our sleeves. And what we've noticed, one reason they picked Tallahassee and one is because we have what it takes to appeal to the talent that's here, but every year we're losing so much talent. So how can we make sure that our community? has all the pieces in play so that we do a better job with talent retention and with retaining the creative class. And the reason we look at that is because when you look at communities, it comes back to economics. When you look at communities that have a strong sense of place and are appealed to the creative class, those communities fare better economically no matter what happens. So if there is a recession, they're doing fine. If there's whatever's going on, they're doing okay and they're continuing to see growth. And you know, we have we're the most educated city in the state. You know, we have the most people that have master's degrees or higher. And and that says a lot about our residents. And I think also when I look at our catalyst groups, it says a lot about the number of people every year that apply to be a catalyst. And then we only pick 12 to 13 because we've seen that that's the amount of people that really can work cohesively in a group, but then that they are all willing to come together, volunteer, volunteer their time for a year to meet constantly, email daily, talk daily, to bring these project ideas. And they all do that because they want this community to be the best version of itself. And they want to do something that enhances our economic vitality. And you hear so many years, people will say, especially parents, they say, you know, I want this to be a place where my child can come back and work here if they can in the future. And you look at, if you look at our KCCI projects, like one of our very first team worked with all different partners to get Gain Street going. You know, we have members that I was on the volunteer catalyst team that we created the Discovery Playscape in Cascades Park. You know, we we pushed with our county leaders and different leaders to say, we need an amphitheater that can appeal to bands, you know, not just something that a Leon High School band can play on, but something that real professional musicians can come and play on. And when you really look all around town, whether it's in Frenchtown with the Frenchtown Farmers Market, the Midtown Action Plan, the North Monroe Gateway, I mean, there are so many different projects that KCCI Community Catalysts have had a hand in impacting. And, and they all do that, and they all spend the time on it because they want this community to be the best version of itself. And, and there are so many issues our community is facing and there's, but we tend to focus not on social issues. We focus more on placemaking type projects. And what you'll see is many times when place is enhanced, that positively improves some of the, those social issues. Well, that is a good point and a good segue into, uh, and Shannon and Dan, since you're the most recent uh, Community Catalyst class, let me ask you guys, as positive and upbeat as our community can be, it also, as you said, Betsy, has its uh, share of challenges and sometimes some naysayers. So when they see a project like um, a wrapping some really eye-catching art around things as pedestrian as uh, traffic control boxes, they may say, but we have all these really serious issues facing us here in town. And here you guys are prettifying, if I can use that word, these boxes. And, and that has no real impact on my life or the life of my family. And that's a waste of time and money and blah, blah, blah. Shannon, how, how do you react to something like that? 
Well, something like a utility box, for example, yes, our city certainly and our county and community has, you know, lots of issues to tackle. But even though you have some of these larger sort of like societal big ticket issues to deal with, you also still have to take care of the everyday things that we need to be able to get through a traffic light, right? You know, go about our business. And so as pedestrian as that sounds, you know, the city and the county, they have to take control of these utility boxes. There, they, there are, you know, people within the utility departments whose job is to make sure that they are not covered in graffiti that will distract drivers, right? <laughs> in a way that they are, you know, taken care of, that they're safe. And so we are simply taking something that we know has to get taken care of and, and using that as a platform for art. And I will also say that, um, even though it might seem intangible, and Dan can probably speak to this better than I because you do not want me drawing your picture personally, but <laughs> that's why we have other people on the Catalyst team who are artists. But you know, the power of art to spark conversations, like Betsy talked about earlier, right? To bring together people who normally might not be in the same room together, right? Or at the same you know, box to, to look at art. That's powerful. And so we envision these boxes as, as, as destinations, right? Can they become part of a walking tour that Visit Tallahassee promotes, right? Can they be part of something that tourists come to see when they come to our community that there are like, you know, there, we have over 300 of these boxes throughout the community. So this program once established can really grow. And that really is our long-term vision for this, that this becomes something that we become known for, um, that can become a destination that brings people together who might not. And other communities, Tom, are doing a great job balancing all of that. You know, you look down at Tampa or St. Pete, they are tackling all the social issues of homelessness, things like that, but then they're still investing in artful infrastructure. And, you know, I feel like you go down to Tampa and there are crosswalks that are colorful and vibrant. There are benches that are colorful and vibrant. And I think by the city commission voting on this artful infrastructure project, it's a way to say, okay, let's move forward. And instead of the typical bench that you see or the typical boring white striped crosswalk, let's use these kind of utilitarian objects, traffic control boxes, to showcase the great work of our local artists, you know, and, and we are very fortunate in Tallahassee to have such, I mean, Dan and so many incredible local artists here, so why not showcase their talents and make this community be a little bit prettier? Speaking of Dan, go. Tom, so we, you've heard us talk about, and we've all talked about placemaking, right? And what placemaking can mean for a, a community or an area of a, a certain neighborhood. Uh, it can involve, uh, you know, the, the sense of place that people have who live there, the, you know, might be um, its walkability or retail and shopping or parks or, but, but it all comes back down to people, right? I mean, that's, unless you have people making a sense of place or place making, then it really doesn't really matter. So um, what, we're, what we're trying to accomplish with these uh, artful boxes, this art of the box project is to get people to have a better sense of place in their own community and perhaps know the artist whose work is on the box uh, be exposed to art, talk more about art, expose their children to art, uh, because you never know when that artful spark might happen and it can, it can change the direction of someone's life. And um, I, as, as critical as it is for us to tackle, you know, some of our big societal problems, um, art still needs to be a part of the solution. And I'm thinking Patrick O'Brien, that even in the most affluent part of town, there is no elementary school in Leon County with the exception of uh, the one that you worked on that has that kind of a triple uh, bicycle course. Uh, you know, you can't find that anywhere else. And, it is, and that is one of the lowest income areas in the community. Yeah, um, it's actually interesting though, because what I really love about our project is, you know, um, other schools started asking us to create it. So Gilchrist is actually right now painting their own version of it, much smaller. It won't be as large, won't be the three-part park. Um, 
that is at Sable Palm, but just on their own, the PTO reached out to, to Betsy and just started asking, how can we create this type of project? And so, yeah, I mean, I was out there Friday paint, helping paint, um, getting it ready. And I know they're doing it today, tomorrow, and I think they'll finish up on Wednesday. Uh, so it's one of those projects that's, you know, spreading to other schools and even a school in Destin, I believe Betsy reached out uh, to KCCI asking the same question is how do we create this type of, you know, mural streetscape as a safety park? And so, it, you know, you can have broad reaches, but yes, I, I love that it first started at Sable Palm, um, and, you know, gave kids something they could be proud of at their school. It sounds like a viral movement in, in the <laughs> very, very best sense of the word. And, and Ryan Sheplak, how do you take the concept of your class, the I love Cali, I love TLH concept, and build upon that? How do you see that playing out ultimately? Or you have to take off uh, mute there, Ryan, sir. Sorry about that. <laughs> One of the, the really interesting things about um, our project is that it's so permanent. Um, and I think that that's one of the, the key things about, you know, providing a permanent structure that will be there 20, 30 years from now. Um, I think kind of a cascading effect that could potentially happen is that, you know, there's the potential for a sculpture walk or, you know, a continuation of sculptures along Fam FAMU Way even down Adams Street, um, heading towards FAMU, I think could be really interesting. Obviously, those are some you know larger steps that would need to be taken in terms of planning for the community. Um, but I, I think the the fact that we took you know uh, a blighted area, which which that area was, it was it was you know essentially a six foot wide sidewalk that was kind of a transition zone between uh, the railroad crossing. Uh, Cascades Park and kind of that area. And I think what happens is when you when you have an intervention in kind of a blighted area, it it immediately impacts the adjacent uh, properties, it immediately impacts the adjacent communities, neighborhoods. And I think that's that's the goal of a lot of these projects is, you know, strategic small interventions can have a large impact on neighborhoods that need it the most. And it, it provides a, you know, you wanna love where you live and you wanna love the community that you live in and providing a, a piece of art, even if it's just a traffic box, you know, people begin to love where they live um, just by providing kind of something as small as, you know, a small piece of art that otherwise wouldn't be there. Um, and I think that's, that's something that's really important with every project that we try to do at KCCI. Just to within a few yards, a few dozen yards of that iconic sculpture that you have there at the base of Cascades Park, Ryan, if you go to the underpass there on South Monroe Street, there are two murals where the railroad goes over. And I remember when those were dedicated, there were several people who said <laughs> the taggers are going to have those just ruined within a matter of weeks they are still relatively pristine. Is there some kind of, I don't know, professional courtesy that taggers uh, <laughs> afford artwork when they see it and go, oh, I don't want to mess that up. I'd rather have a blank canvas for my um, own art. I don't want to <laughs> mess up, you know, somebody else's art. Is that really a thing? And is that part of the rationale behind some of what's going on with KCCI now? I hope so. I hope that's the case, that, that people respect it because it is art. Um, I think we've been very fortunate with the TLH sculpture that it hasn't been, you know, tagged yet. Um, knock on wood, hopefully it doesn't happen. Um, and what's interesting is we, we took that into account with the constructability of the sculpture as well. So all of the slats are able to be removed if, if they do have some type of vandalism on them or just, you know, any type of maintenance that needs to be done to the inside of the letters with lighting. Um, also with the materials, it being a weathering steel, uh, it's called core 10 steel. It naturally kind of creates a patina over the steel to protect it. You can easily wash it off, sand it down and it'll weather right back over. And, and so if there is ever you know, a chance where someone comes with a spray paint and hits it, um, sand it down and we have a maintenance plan. Um, so that was one of the things that we, took into account. As far as murals, it's paint, you can paint back over it, so. 
<laughs> a friend of ours who actually uh, worked with us at WFSU for quite a while and then went to Ireland to do some graduate work, sent back some absolutely remarkable photographs taken in some of the lower income areas of the community where she was attending school. And at the end of these blocks of turn of the last century row houses, where normally there would just be a blank wall, there were these magnificent murals, in some cases, uh, these three-dimensional type constructs, similar to what the chalk artists did on the sidewalks here at the recent Chain of Parks Art Festival. And though, even though those neighborhoods remain economically challenged, the quality of life seems somehow really enhanced just because of those images. And the, the community seems to have, I don't know, gotten some kind of a, a real kick in the rear, if you will, because of, of the images. Betsy Couches, that's what you see happening here in Tallahassee, little by little, bit by bit, the overall quality of life of the community goes up because uh, you never know what you're going to see when you turn that next corner. It may be something really neat. Absolutely. And I think that's where you go in sometimes with small interventions, but how, like what Patrick said, they have that, they're that catalyst to really make that transformative change. You know, even looking at, look at Frenchtown years ago when the Frenchtown farmer's market was just getting started and that became a regularly scheduled market. They then were able to have the French on Farmers Market building where, I mean, so much hub of activity is going on there now. And you look at French Town, it's so art filled now. They've painted their driveways because of leadership from a lot of their neighbors and done a lot of really cool kind of art interventions in that area. And it's, we'll notice that all over the community when you go in with some small scale place making efforts it really does lead to that increased kind of social cohesion and that community pride in their area. You might notice sometimes we've seen like where you're going and you're creating something. Well, then people tend to not just throw their litter down around a beautiful park space that you've just created. Or, you know, like what you mentioned with the artwork, there is kind of this code amongst graffiti artists that really they're going out to put their graffiti on things that they deem as unsightly. So many times if there's art there, they're um, respecting that artistic element. And you'll, you'll see murals sometimes where the mural right leading up to it is the graffiti, but the graffiti artist didn't go and tag over the mural because they respect that artistic element as well. And, and that, um, I think a lot of what we think through is very thought through of how it will appeal to so many people with our projects, but then also most important is the sustainability as well, because you could create a beautiful art of the box, but if you haven't thought through the maintenance and the quality, um, you know, one of the worst things for our city would be if all of a sudden you have a lot of art out there, but it isn't at that quality level. And so that is something you have to always think through too, is how can that long-term quality and beautification be maintained? And Ryan's project was a great example of that. You know, they even purchased extra wood so that the wood is aging at the same level as the wood that's on the actual letters right now so that when wood does need to be replaced. And we really thought that through even with one of our older catalyst projects with discovering Cascades Park. You know, there we pulled that main thing that the kids climb out on that wooden piece, you know, that was petrified wood from some of the lakes nearby. And it's amazing to the amount of people that take pictures on that because they look at that piece of wood as a piece of art and, you know, how you can even design a playground. So it is an artistic element in its own space. And of course, in Discovery, there is a piece of art by Paul Tamanian, but then you look at the entire place space and it is artistic altogether as a collective whole. And it's amazing. You never can go to Cascades Park and not see families and kids in that Discovery space. It can even be at midnight and there are still kids playing there with the parents, you know, watching nearby, make sure everything is still okay. Go ahead, Shannon. So I think one thing that is so cool about all of these projects, because you talked about, you know, there are people who may say we have all of these important issues to tackle, but there is something that is so important about the message that we send to a neighborhood, to an organization, to a child, 
when you take something outside the normal or you take something that is unsightly and you turn it into something beautiful because you're sending the message to them that you matter enough that we took the time to make this something amazing, right? We took the time for all those kids at Sable Park to teach them how to safely ride a bike and to give them something fun to do. We took the time to give to put the iconic thing for Tallahassee in the South side. We didn't put it in the North side. <laughs> we didn't put it in Midtown, right? And so we have the opportunity too, to take these unsightly, maybe graffiti covered, you know, utility boxes in neighborhoods that maybe those people don't have a lot, but if they all of a sudden are walking around or driving around and they see these pops of art and color in their neighborhood that, that in many cases are gonna come from county funding and, and, and potentially city funding, that's also a testament to our city and county leaders because they are sending a message to their residents. We care enough about you to make sure that the place that you live is something that you can be proud of. And that to me is the most powerful thing that KCCI does and that all of these projects are doing. Enhancing that sense of place, no matter where that place is. And I think we're so fortunate as a community too, to have such great leadership. You know, you look at Blueprint and all they're able to do. You look at the city and the county and to have leaders that believe in and they see the benefits of projects like this. And so they pave the pathway for citizens groups like Catalyst to kind of go out and make it happen. Because as with all of these projects, it takes a huge collaboration of governmental partners, Catalyst team members, private partners, our KCCI sponsors, and none of that would be possible if everybody, everybody has to work together to see that change. And whether it's small change or big change, when we're all working collaboratively, that's when the true success happens, which is so exciting to watch. Folks, thank you for the success of KCCI now approaching its 25th anniversary, which means we have to come back and do this again so we can get an update <laughs> on what's going on with uh, KCCI. And it's uh, then uh, a brand new Catalyst class that's going to be doing some great things in the community. So uh, Patrick O'Brien, Dan Taylor, Ryan Sheplak, Shannon Colavecchio, and Betsy Couch, thank you all for coming on this edition of Perspectives and talking about KCCI. Here's to uh, another almost uh, 25 years of success, folks. And thanks for being part of Perspectives, which, by the way, is produced by WFSU Public Media in Tallahassee. Thanks to uh, Taylor Cox, Paul Dan, Amy Diaz de Viegas, Brandon Brown, Trisha Moynihan pushing the buttons today, and Lydell Rawls, our director of content, Kim Kelly, who's executive producer, and I'm Tom Flanagan. Well, when it comes to our military veterans, the default is, of course, to say thank you for your service, and then you go about your day. But there are untold numbers of veterans, many right here in our own community, who need a lot more than words of gratitude. Luckily, there are some established organizations that are working to bring that help. We're going to be talking about that next week, right here on Perspectives from WFSU Public Media. Take care.